Hello, uh, this video is about getting the most out of an inexpensive chromatic button accordion. I'm making this video to show you how it works, to show you how you can improve the instrument a bit. So I bought this accordion, uh, it's my first chromatic button accordion, uh, it's, and I bought it for 400 euros online second hand. So I didn't want to buy a really expensive one because I want to play outside with it, travel with it so it might get damaged. Um, also, I didn't just want to spend a lot of money for the first button accordion I bought. So I'm going to show you uh, some fixes, uh, some improvements I did in this accordion. So the first one is uh, removing a note from the seventh chord, because this one had four notes on the seventh chord instead of three. Two, uh, I've added actually an extra option, an extra bass, bass uh, register, and three, uh, I've improved the balance between the treble and the bass a bit. So that's it. Uh, first I want to tell you a bit uh, about this accordion. Um, so the brand is uh, Barcarole and it was made in East, Eastern Germany uh, by the Gebrüder uh, Gündel, a company which was later bought I think in 1972 by Weltmeister. So it's from before 1972. I've actually found an old catalog uh, in where this is advertised. It's a little bit of different version, so it's not exact this one, but I'll show it to you now. Uh, and the range is from a low, uh, a low C to a high A. So this is the lowest voice, then we have the middle voice. And then we have the highest voice. And then there's a fourth voice which, which you can use to get a tremolo effect. This is just the two middle ones. You can add a lower voice. You can add a, instead add a higher voice. Or use the master switch and you have all the voices. So that's the loudest sound you can get out of it. Um, and you have all combinations you would want, other combinations. So the range here is almost four octaves, and with the using of different voices, you have actually almost six octaves. So on the bass side, we have four voices. The lowest voice goes from uh, a low G. low G to the F sharp and there's another octave on top of that with the same so that's another voice is one octave higher uh, and then the third voice which is a chord voice is from uh, a D to a C sharp and then the fourth voice is again an octave higher D to C sharp and there are three registers or so three ways to combine uh, these voices uh, so first we have uh, the lowest button which selects the middle two voices uh, and then we have the high one which selects only the highest two voices which are both chord voices So the weird thing about this one is actually that the chord vo voices include all the bass notes, so the bass note can be higher than the chords. Then we have the master switch which has, which has all four voices. So now we go to the first fix, removing the fourth note from the seventh chord. So for example we have a G here. We have a G major chord, minor, G7. So when I got this accordion, it turned out that when you play the seventh chord, you get four, all the four notes of the seventh chord. And this is something I don't want uh, because, uh, well, if you just play this chord, it doesn't matter. But you want sometimes you want to combine a, a chord button with a different bass note, so you can have like funky chords. And one of my favorite chords is actually. Uh, uses the, the seventh button. So I will now play a little piece so you can hear that the chord is not the way I want it to be. So I 
actually the you see the chord here, the uh, lower the ninth. I don't want in the chord, but I have to do it because this, the seventh button has four notes. So now I'm going to show you how to remove that note. To be more precise, we have to remove the fifth of every chord. For example, for a C chord, we have to remove the G. First, I'm going to use this thing to remove these nails because I want to turn this thing upside down. It's easiest if I uh, remove the top parts. I just remove here. There are three more at the back. So now we can lift up the top part. Put it here. And now we see the base side with the reeds. I'm going to turn it around. Okay, so now I want to remove this thing. For that, I first have to loosen the strap a bit, or rather, just completely get rid of it. Well, to open this, for this accordion, it's really simple. I uh, just have to turn these screws a little bit. I can do this. And off it goes. So now we see the intricate mechanism of the Stradella bass system. See, when I push buttons, all things start moving. When you push a bass button, it's a bit further down. Uh, then one of these long metal sticks is rotating, one of these 12. That will make sure that the corresponding four holes will open for that note to sound, because this is a four voice accordion. Um, when I push a chord button, you see we have on this side, you see all kinds of metal things are connected. And this will make sure that three or four of these 12 long metal sticks will rotate and they're each connected to one note of the octave. So then we have three notes of a chord sounding. So I'm now pushing a button corresponding to a seventh chord. You see actually there are only three sticks, little sticks moving because I already did the fix, but if I hadn't done it, there would be a here a metal piece as well. And this stick here would move as well. So there would be four sticks moving. These are connected to four of these long metal bars, and these will open four notes. So for this type of accordion, it's quite easy to fix this because these sticks are set in motion by other metal pieces connected to this rod and you can just bend them back. So how do you determine which of the four pieces of metal you have to bend? Well, there are multiple ways to do this. First, you have to establish what are the notes corresponding to these long horizontal metal sticks. And one way to do that is you start pushing buttons. I mean, you know which note should, should sound. And look which ones are moving, and then you can determine what are the notes. Uh, in my case, it turns out it's chromatically arranged. So we start with the A flat, then we have an A, a B flat, etc. We end up with a G. So that's one way, because then you can look, if you push a button, you can look, oh, this, this is the note I don't want anymore. It's connected to this stick and that's being pushed by this metal piece. So that's the piece I need to bend. So that's, what, that's how you do it. And a way to check is, to notice that in a seventh chord, uh, the fifth is actually three semitones above the major third of the chord and three semitones below the seventh of the chord. So there's a note three semitones on the one side and three semitones on the other side. So if you look at uh, which rods are moving, you will see that one is moving and that's located uh, three watts below another one that's moving and three watts above another one that's also moving. And if you're at the, at the edge, you have to wrap around when you're counting. So it's a bit uh, mathematics, but uh, that's a way to check it. And it's good to check because you don't want to bend the wrong pieces of metal, uh, because then uh, you have to bend it back and you might break it. 
I also noticed that this metal uh, bends really easily, so that's good. But it's also dangerous because when you bend it, you bend other things as well. You have to bend it back. So just be really careful. Well, you do this for 20 uh, rods. Uh, it took me about 10-15 minutes, I think, once I figured out how to do it. Uh, let's see if it works. Okay, so now uh, I fixed it. Um, I will play the, the, the piece again with the correct chord. So now I'm going to show you the second fix, and this has to do with the bass registers. I mean, I really like the bass of this instrument, especially the low, the, the, the deep basses. So, for example, the G goes, goes really, that's the lowest note. I really love it. The only thing is, I think the combinations of the voices is a bit uh, weird, uh, as I showed you in the beginning. And it has, this, so, uh, with actually both of these options, you have... higher than the lowest note of the chord. Now for this one I don't really matter that much, but the, the one I w probably want to use the most is this register. And there I, don't, I really don't want that. I want, I want the low bass notes also in this register. But just, just not possible. Uh, only if you use the master, but then you get also the fourth, the highest voice. And then it's really loud and this can be nice sometimes but not all the time. So actually I want to have the possibility of having the, lo the, the lower three voices. So, so just all voices except the highest one. And I'm going to show you uh, how I fix that. Okay, so we're back at the fixing table. First I have to remove this intricate Stradella system. So I do this and this and then there are just some tiny screws I have to unscrew. Okay, so now we can just get this out. Okay, now you actually see the path for the bass voices and for the chord voices. But I want to focus on this part because that's what we're going to work on. These buttons, when you push them, things start moving. You see there are three things rotating here and they are connected underneath to plastic sheets with holes in it and they are shifting and they will open and close uh, the holes be no below these pads. So that's how the voices are activated and deactivated. And how does this work exactly? Well, to each of these rotating things here, there's connected a large piece of metal. And when you push a button, two little things move because something is rotating and they either push the metal to the left or to the right. So each of the three pieces of metal to the left, or to the right, depending on whether it's a thing sticking out on this side or on that side. So for example, for the master register switch, you see there are only things sticking out on this side, which means all the metal things move that way, which means all the voices open. And for the high register, you see there are two pieces of metal on this side, meaning two voices will close. So what can we do? Well, when we push the master button, all voices are activated. When we then push the bass button, uh, the lowest and the highest voice, voices 1 and 4, are deactivated. What we actually want is only voice 4 to be deactivated. So voice 1, the lowest one, keeps sounding. And we can do that by just sewing off this piece of metal corresponding to the lowest voice. Um, and we can do that using just this metal saw. Um, well, isn't that a problem then? Because uh, 
do we, don't we then miss the register we originally had? Well, no, actually not, because if you first push the highest button and then the lowest button, um, then because the highest uh, button already turned off the lowest voice, then the lowest voice is still deactivated when we push the lowest button. So then we have the configuration of voice two and three. So now we can have both. We can have what we already had, and we have an additional setting, which we get by first pushing the middle one and then pushing the lower one. So we have now four registers actually with only three buttons. Okay, so I already performed this fix. I'm not going to do this again, but I'll tell you how I did it. First, you have to remove these little plastic things. You can just pull them off, but be careful because they fly away. Then you can take these all apart. So you have three pieces of metal then. And then you find the piece of metal you want to uh, saw off and you use in just a saw to, to remove it. I'll show you. This is it. Really small. But it makes a lot of difference because now I can use the register I actually use the most, which is the lowest three voices. Let's see how it sounds. Uh, if I select the, the lowest register after the highest register, I have it the way it was. Which is with the high bass notes. If I select it after the middle register, the after the master one, I get the low uh, bass notes as well. So, that's nice. So, fix number three. So this is about the balance between the right, the treble side, and the left, the bass side. Uh, when I got this accordion, I noticed that the bass side, I really like, I like a lot of the low notes, but it's really loud. And the treble side is a little less loud, and sometimes when I play, uh, this gets completely flooded by the bass side. So I googled this, and more people have the same issue. And what some people answer is, yeah, but on an accordion you only play, you should only play like short chords. Well, in some styles you only play short chords, but I like to play like all kinds of styles and also a lot of classical music. And I like to play uh, long chords. So I will now uh, give you an example of a piece where the right side gets a bit flooded by the left side. So now I'm gonna show you how to fix this. So now we've arrived at our third and final fix is improving the balance between the bass side and the treble side. Well, first I wanna work on the bass side. Well, the easiest thing actually is if you take a look at this cover, you see there are quite some openings in it. Actually I have another accordion where there are much less openings. And the sound of course gets out here a lot and also the air gets in a lot. So one fix is to just uh, close this. So, and I do this just by taping it, pretty easy. So that's that. So the second thing uh, you can do, what I did, is actually using a towel and put it in between. So this absorbs a lot of the sound and it also prevents air from flowing. Uh, and I put this towel just around uh, this base side, just put it around here, uh, and then we get the desired effect. So let's do that. So first I need to fix this Stradella base part again, so let me do that first. So it's actually easy if you put it a bit like this, because then graffiti keeps helping the bus buttons being depressed. Okay, that's fixed. So, and then use tape to uh, fix it here and here, and maybe here. And make sure the towel doesn't impede the movement of your buttons and also of your uh, air release button. So 
So actually here I've, I've uh, taped the towel to a piece of this air release system, but it still works fine. So actually the movement of uh, the buttons was a bit impeded when I put uh, a double folded behind there. So I just put a single sheet of the towel behind there and folded a part, little part back. So, so it should be fine now. Close the cover. Yeah, the buttons are fine. Now we put back the strap. Okay, so we're done with the base side. So actually there's another thing I did to improve the balance uh, on the treble side. Because I don't want to have the accordion rest on the buttons on this hard surface, I'm gonna put something under. So here you can have a look at the reeds, the treble reeds. I've actually calculated how many there are. There are 464 reeds in this instrument. So I paid less than one euro per read, which is a good deal, I think. Because I just wanted to take the whole thing apart, uh, I also removed these reed plugs. And I will just remove one uh, now uh, as a demonstration. So first I have to, uh, first I'm unlinking it from the other reed plugs. Then there's the screw here. And there, then there are these things on the side, which I first removed using this, but there's no little room, so I have to like do like a one six rotation for a long time. Uh, so today I bought this thing, which makes it a lot easier. So, and I found out that when I first removed it, it was kind of really stuck really tight. And well, my theory is that it resonates better when it's not really that tight. So I've now put them back and not extremely tight, but I've no idea if this is really true. So it's nice to see the reed plug. It's actually just a really big mouth harp. You can actually blow on it and, and, and uh, suck on it. Uh, However, I've read it is not good to do because uh, your your breath uh, is humid, and this will make the things corrode. So while I'm while I'm doing this, I can show you how the uh, registers work. Uh, so when you push a button, you see the voices open and close. So that's, there are these plastic sheets in between uh, with holes in it and they shift like that. So one last thing I wanted to say is that uh, I've actually also tried to put a towel uh, over here on the, in the bellows over the base side. But uh, I removed that again because, well, the first thing, I don't want to damage the reeds or the valves. So it was a bit scary to put a towel there. And actually I found out two notes were very much out of tune when the towel was in there. Probably the towel was touching the reeds or something. So I've removed that and I think uh, the effect is already enough without the towel here. So uh, I'm not gonna do that again, put a towel inside the bellows. So you can just push back these nails. Be careful you don't scratch the accordion with it. Sometimes you need to use a tool to just push them a bit further because your hands won't be enough. So, we're done. So, after the fix, it sounds like this. So, there's another thing that might improve the balance a little bit, uh, and that's just removing this cover. Uh, then the, the treble uh, keys will be exposed, it's also nice to see, so I will do that now.
So now it sounds like this. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Uh, if you have any comments or any questions, please comment and ask questions. Bye. And now I just I just have to and now I just have to start practicing a lot. <laughs>